So what do atoms look like? Well, uncharged atoms have nuclei, which is once again the region where their protons and neutrons are located, which are surrounded by electrons. The electrons zoom around in an orbit around the nuclei so fast that they make what looks kind of like a large three-dimensional cloud called an electron cloud. A hydrogen atom, which is shown right here, has a nucleus that contains one proton and no neutrons, with a single electron zipping around its nucleus to form the electron cloud, which is shown as a gray colored cloud here. I want you to understand the nucleus, which is indicated by this uh, word and this arrow, is this tiny little space where the proton is located, and for heavier elements, the neutrons are located as well. This huge cloud, which constitutes the vast majority of the volume of the atom, is basically comprised of a single electron that's shooting around in a three-dimensional uh, sphere so quickly that it makes that type of shape. I want you to keep this in mind as we turn to additional topics. Which brings us to the subject of atomic, also called chemical symbols. You see, we use abbreviations called atomic symbols to describe elements. Here's the symbol for magnesium. Looking at the symbol, we should recognize that magnesium's atomic number, which appears as a subscript to the lower left of the atomic symbol, Mg, corresponds to the box in which magnesium appears on the periodic table. The atomic number is always the same for all elements with the same letter symbol. In other words, all magnesium atoms always have an atomic number of 12. Also, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, so all magnesium atoms have 12 protons. The number of protons in a given element never changes. If, for example, I increased a magnesium atom's number of protons to 13, it would actually change the identity of that element to be that of element number 13, which is aluminum. So yes, you can change elements by adding or removing protons from them. However, it's just really hard. <laughs> we'll talk about how this is done during our chapter 21 coverage on nuclear chemistry next semester. So what in the world is a mass number? Well, simply put, an atom's mass number is essentially how much that atom weighs. When we look at our periodic table, the mass number is a superscript that appears in the upper left-hand corner next to the atomic symbol. In the case of most magnesium atoms, that mass number is 24, which is shown here. So once again, this is magnesium's atomic number, the number of protons that it has, which is 12. And this is magnesium's mass number, its weight, which for this particular magnesium atom is 24. Now although an atom's atomic number, which is the same as its number of protons, can never change without changing the element, an atom's mass number can change without changing the element. Why? Because although you can't change the number of protons without changing the element, you can change the number of neutrons. And doing so doesn't change the identity of the element. It only changes the element's mass. Here's the formula for mass number. The mass number of any atom is equal to the number of its protons plus the number of its neutrons. By way of example, a magnesium atom has 12 protons and 12 neutrons. Thus, its mass is 24, because 12 plus 12 equals 24. But not all magnesium atoms weigh 24. Some weigh 23 and some weigh 25. How is that possible? Because different magnesium atoms can have different numbers of neutrons. So magnesium 25 atom has 12 protons and 13 neutrons, because 12 plus 13 is 25. While a magnesium 23 atom has 12 protons and 11 neutrons. So different atoms of the same element can have different numbers of neutrons? Absolutely. So why do some magnesium atoms have 13 neutrons while others have 12 and others have 11? The answer is isotopes. And what are isotopes? Simply put, they are atoms with the same atomic number but different masses. This happens when two otherwise identical atoms have different numbers of neutrons. For example, 
Most carbon atoms have six neutrons. We call these carbon-12 or C12 atoms because they weigh about 12 AMU. That's because six neutrons plus six protons equals 12. Other carbon atoms, however, have seven neutrons. These are called carbon-13 or C13 atoms because they weigh 13 AMU. We would say that carbon-12 and carbon-13 atoms are different isotopes of carbon. All of these, however, have the same atomic number, which is 6, and the same number of protons, which is 6. If we change the number of protons in a carbon atom to 7, for example, it would no longer be carbon. It would now be a nitrogen atom. I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at some problems. From our problem set, we read, there are blank electrons, blank protons, and blank neutrons in an atom of xenon-132. Now, if we remember the formula from slide 16 that I shared earlier, we'll recall that an atom's mass number equals its number of protons plus its number of neutrons. So how do we determine the number of neutrons? By subtracting the number of protons from the atom's mass. Hence, if I take 132 and I subtract 54 from it, that will give me the number of neutrons in this particular isotope of xenon. Here's another one. Which combination of protons, neutrons, and electrons is correct for the isotope of copper labeled copper 63? I personally believe that I've given you guys enough information to do this on your own. And here's another one. Which isotope has 45 neutrons? Remember, to determine the number of neutrons, we take the atom's mass and we subtract from it the number of protons. Good luck finding the correct answer. Now, as I've said before, carbon atoms that have just six protons and six neutrons have an atomic mass of 12, which is 6 plus 6. Most carbon atoms are of this type. Some carbon atoms, however, have six protons and seven neutrons, which makes them weigh 13. These atoms are called carbon-13 atoms. An even fewer number of carbon atoms have six protons and eight neutrons. These are called carbon-14 atoms. Why am I telling you all of this? Just because. <laughs> no, seriously, I've got a real reason. You see, if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that the atomic mass listed for carbon isn't 12, 13, or 14. It's 12.0107. And where in the world did we come up with that number? Well, 12.0107 is a weighted average that takes into account the relative amounts and weights of how many carbon 12s, carbon 13s and carbon 14s there are in the world, all squished into one specific number. This number is called the element's atomic weight. So to distinguish between the two, an atom's atomic mass is how much that specific individual atom weighs. But an element's atomic weight is how much all of the atoms of that element weigh on average, taking into account the individual percentages of each of that element's isotopes, such as carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. So if we're given the natural abundance percentage of different isotopes of an element, as well as each isotope's individual atomic mass, we can calculate the element's overall atomic weight. I'll show you how with the following problem. The element X has three naturally occurring isotopes. The masses in AMU and percent abundances of these isotopes are given in the table shown here. The average atomic mass of the element is blank AMU. So here's how we would do this problem. We would take 220.9, which corresponds to the atomic mass of this isotope, and multiply it by 0.7422. Now that is 74.22 divided by 100. We would then add to that 220.0, which is the mass of the second isotope, multiplied by 0.1278, the percentage of that isotope. We would then add to that 218.1, the mass of the last isotope, multiplied by 13 point, or sorry, point, by 0 0.013. If you add all of that up together, you get 220.421, which, when we account for the correct number of significant figures in this problem, ends up giving us B as our correct answer. So, this is how, if we are given the different atomic masses of different isotopes and their percentage of abundance, we can calculate the overall atomic weight of that particular element.
Here's another problem for you to try. Element X has three naturally occurring isotopes. The masses in AMU and percent abundances of the isotopes are given in the table below. The average atomic mass of the element is blank AMU. And here's another problem that's very similar, though slightly different. The average atomic weight of copper, which has two naturally occurring isotopes, is 63.5. One of these isotopes has an atomic weight of 62.9 and constitutes 69.1% of the copper isotopes. The other isotope has an abundance of 30.9%. The atomic weight of the second isotope is blank AMU. So how in the world would we do this? Well, in this problem, we're given copper's atomic weight, the percent abundances of its two isotopes, and the mass of only one. We're then asked to solve for the mass of the second isotope. Here's how we would set this problem up. We would take the individual masses of each isotope multiplied by their relative fractional percentages added in this equation and set those equal to the overall atomic weight for the element of copper. Now because we don't know the individual atomic mass of one of those isotopes, we set it equal to x. Then all we have to do is solve for x. I'll go ahead and let you do this on your own. And here's another problem for the sake of chemistry mastery. I'm going to refrain from reading it to you. I'll let you read it yourself and then see if you can tackle it on your own.